An estimated one and a half million jackpot tonight at 10 on TV3. Killing the poor guy to marry her. And now her life's in his hands. Oh, I love this. You know, this is what she gets for being so evil. What? Just because she's trying to kill her husband and steal her mom's company? And make her good sister Jenny suffer. At least now, Jenny would be able to have Eric. What about Denise's kid David? How's he going to take it when he finds out who his real father is? I've got a feeling we're about to find out. Where do we start? Where we left off. Denise is choking to death. Well, Denise, you present me with an interesting dilemma. <laughs> if I let you die, I'll be disgracing my profession and every principle I hold dear just to avoid becoming your husband. And after all, how bad could that be? <laughs> Ciao. <laughs> No, I can't do this. Can I? Well, of course I can, but should I? In any case, I've only got 30 seconds before lack of oxygen turns her brain into Yorkshire pudding. You've given me every reason to hate you, you know. I should be able to walk out that door without a trace of guilt. I really should. Yes, I should. Damn you, Denise. Oh, God. Eric, you saved my life. Thank God. After I've done nothing but, but be mean to you and humiliate you and make your life a living hell. Grape? <laughs> As of this moment, the blackmail is off. If only you meant that. Oh, I do mean it, Eric. I won't hold you. You're saying I'm free? You're not going to make me marry you? No, I won't. <laughs> because now I know you really want to marry me. No, I really don't. Yes, you do. No, really. I'd rather be pecked to death by ducks. Well, then, you leave me no choice. The blackmail is back on. But you just said I was a free man. Captain of my own destiny. I thought I could restore some shred of dignity to my life. Tough break. Now, where were we? Denise, hmm. you can force me into a wedding. You can even force me into a loveless marriage, but you cannot force me to endure one more moment in this room with you. <gasps> Costume company holding my credit card. Jen, I just love this place. The sights, the sounds, the smells. Well, mostly the sounds and the smells, you know. It's one of my favorite places, too. It always cheers me up to be around happy people. Oh, yes. Ah! Oh! <laughs> Laughter heals all wounds. Even so, it never occurred to me that coming here could help Caroline. Oh, absolutely. Recent studies show that even a patient that is totally brain dead benefits from an outing. Which explains the popularity of monster trucks. I just hope it's not too much stimulation for her. <laughs> Jen, you worry too much. There's absolutely nothing here that can hurt her. I like to think that life is like an amusement park. You know, but you can't play. 
play if you don't buy a ticket. All right, folks, ball toss here. Hit three stacks of bottles and win the big prize. Anybody? How about a little lady? Huh? For on. example, set me up. Are you kidding me or what? What does this tell you? <laughs> Welcome, friend. <laughs> George, are you sure? Jen, need I remind you, I'm working here, please. So, Caroline, have you ever done anything like this with your dad? Did I get it? Damn near. <laughs> George, that's not therapy for today. Trust me, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> All right! You, you know, Caroline, you could be having fun like this. But maybe you're afraid to hurt your dad's feelings because he isn't here to share in the joy. <laughs> Dad is half as wonderful as everyone says he is. I'm sure that he just wants you to be happy. George, you were right. I've never seen anyone make quite that much of an impression on Caroline. Oh, Jen, do you really think so? Oh, Freud's got nothing on you. Let's go. Oh, okay. oh here, I believe these are yours. Ah! Oh, I'm so sorry. Sonny. Sonny. Why are we stopping? We've got lots more ships to check out. I'm for breakfast. Shot in a brew. <laughs> Look, I don't mean to rush you during the most important meal of the day. But I hate to find out that my dad's ship sailed and I missed him. How are you going to know him if you do find him? You've never even seen your old man. I think I got him pictured, though. Captain David Ethan. Big guy. Major Tan from being at sea. Crisp white uniform. Kid. I'm afraid you got your dad mixed up with the tidy bowl man. <laughs> what are you going to do if he's not exactly what you'd call a hero? Well, he's my dad. I don't care what he's like. Well, so long as he's not some scuzz. Define scuzz. Any of you girls want to play cards? I'm in. Sonny, I thought we were going to get going. Five card draw. Jack's to open, trips to win. No anties, no wild cards, and no limit. And please, kids, no horseplay by the pool. <laughs> Want him out of here. Don't like amateurs around when I'm playing cards, unless they're at the table. Now, this kid could clean you out and leave you with nothing but the lice in your chest hair. <laughs> you're on. You saying you're gonna stake him? That's right. I'm telling you, Sonny, it's a bad idea. My real game is Yahtzee. <laughs> Am I interrupting? Constantly. I came over as soon as Eric told me about what happened last night. You spoke to Eric behind my back? That does it. I'm hiring a private investigator to keep an eye on you two. Denise, he said you nearly died. Yes, well, better luck next time. Please don't talk like that. If I'd lost you, my last memory would be of us fighting. Oh, we're not fighting. I just hate you. <laughs> All right. Maybe you don't care about me, but that doesn't stop me from caring about you. Oh, you're my only sister. I love you no matter what. You're not here because you care about me. <laughs> Why else would I be here? You're here because I'm about to marry the man of your dreams, and you're trying to guilt me out of it. Poor Denise. You can't face yourself without believing everyone else is as bad as you are. <laughs> Me. <laughs> Ronald! How did you get up there? I climbed. How else? But it's 15 stories. Yes. But I had to give you the good news in person. It's back. <laughs> What's back? <laughs> oh, that. <laughs> yes. I was beginning to fear my time in the ice had forever curtailed my ability to, shall we say, hoist the mainsail. Well, isn't this wonderful? I'll say. Although we did make scaling the building rather difficult. Ronald, I told you it was too risky.
risky for you to be seen here. Precisely why I avoided the elevator and the stairs. But Ronald... Oh, Denise, love me. Love me as a husband should be loved. Well, all right. But make it quick. <laughs> Mother! Charlotte? Ronald? Get you out of here. But your mother's already seen me. She spoke my name. Oh, I'll handle her. Just get out of here before someone else sees you. Please, Denise. Do you remember Mount St. Helen? This is what it looked like before. <laughs> no, it isn't safe. Oh, don't worry, darling. I bought one of the druggists. <laughs> Ronald, go. Oh, all right. I'll hide in the loo till she leaves. No, she'll look in there. Quick, back on the ledge. But... As soon as the coast is clear, I'll let you back in and we'll, we'll play with your pitons. <laughs> oh. Hello, Mother. I didn't see you come in. I just uh, came to see the... Ronald! Ronald who? Ronald, your husband. What have you done with him? What are you talking about? Knock, knock. Did you see a man out there? Well, not unless you count old Roger, and, well, personally, I wouldn't. <laughs> Mother's seeing ghosts. She seems to think she saw my dead husband. I did. He was right there. Don't tell me I didn't see him. Now, sweetheart, why don't you tell me just exactly what you saw? He was right over there with Denise, and they were doing it. Doing what? It. Ah, Casper the Horny Ghost. Well, I'm glad you find this so amusing. If you had any true feelings for my mother, you would help me put her in the loony bin. I'm not mad. I saw what I saw. All right, now nobody's putting anybody in a padded cell. Now, darling, don't you think you've been working a little too hard lately? I've worked hard all my life. Yes, but you got dizzy the other night. Now you're seeing someone who no one else saw. I'm worried about you, darling. Well, perhaps I have been burning the candle at both ends. And how's my beauty queen gonna look in front of those press boys tomorrow unless she relaxes a bit and has her face on? Well, I suppose a nap and a cucumber mask might not be such a bad idea. Mm. <laughs> now you talk. Oh. <gasps> <gasps> what? Do you expect me to thank you? Nope. In the cattle business, this is what we call an all-bull deal. Translation? Everybody gets a little tail, but nobody's got to bend over. <laughs> Please spare me the poetry and get to the point. Well, we're both after the same thing here. You want your mother out of this company, and I want her sitting on the beach feeding me my ties and stuffing sea notes in my bun huggers. <laughs> now there's a pretty picture. <laughs> have we got a deal? You are the most despicable man I've ever met. Of course we have a deal. Pleasure doing business with you. Hmm. Roger, get in here. Yes? Well, I have good news for you. Poor Ma. Mm -hmm. You know how I've been badgering you all week to find someone to kill Ronald? Well, you don't have to do it anymore. Oh, thank God. Because you're going to kill him. <laughs> what? Yes, he's out on that ledge. All you have to do is go out there and push him off. Are you insane? I'm not some vicious killer. I, I'm an art history major with a severe case of vertigo. Roger, get out there now! I'm sorry, Denise. No amount of money, nothing you can say or do is going to get me out on that ledge. <gasps> Look, isn't that Liza Minnelli? No, where? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Sonny. Anytime you want me to give poker lessons on your tab, you just holler. Wait, just one more game. I know I can win it back. Now, what are you going to bet with? I'm down to my underwear. Well, I would be if I wore any. I got a few bucks of my own. Well, since you're asking so nicely, I can squeeze in one more. But just one. What's your game? Indian. What the hell's Indian? Well, it's just like poker, except you can't see your own hand. Why not? Because you hold it like this. Oh, another game you're bad at. <laughs> I'm in. Who bets first? Whoever thinks he's going to win. 
20 bucks, right? Raise your 50, dork. Make it 100, pizza face. Your 100 and another 100, pizza butt. Pizza butt. A thousand. I don't have that kind of cash. <laughs> don't worry about that. You just fold and I take all of this. Nobody's folding. Game's not over yet. My, my, my. You staking him with the pink slip to your Harley? Only if you kick in another three grand. Son of your Harley? You think you can beat him? Well, yeah, but... That's all I need to know. <laughs> this is great. I always wanted to be a two-hog family. <laughs> you already are. I've seen your wife. <laughs> Again. Sorry. Said one game, we play one game. Hey. While you're still conscious, want to tell me where to mail the nose? <laughs> My old lady's gonna kill me, Sonny. We were saving up for an armoire. <laughs> hey, Chief, you won. You can take off the headdress. I can't believe you put your bike on the line, Sonny. I'm not used to people trusting me like that. Just count the money. You know, I gotta tell you, when I first met you, I thought, well, I don't know, I figured that, I just kind of guessed, well, I don't know, you know? Kind of sums it up. <laughs> David Ethan? Sonny, this registration says David Ethan. Either you stole this from my dad or you... Hi, son. Hail hey, Mary. <laughs> Full of grace. <laughs> Hallowed be thy name. No, that's not it. <laughs> Why did I ever leave the seminary? <laughs> Good day. Oh. Stay down, man. Didn't mean to give you such a start. You've got to help me. I'm desperately afraid of heights. Well, you've picked an odd place for a stroll then, haven't you? Uh, if I may ask, why are you out here? Uh, I'm on a dare. Yes, a dare. Uh, a friend said I couldn't make it all the way around the building. You know, I could lead you to safety, but uh, I wonder whether that would really be the best thing. Yes, it would, <laughs> trust me. No, no, hear me through. You came out here on a mission, correct? You could call it that. Now, wouldn't you feel much keener about yourself if you were able to go back inside and honestly say to your friend, I did it? I suppose, in a way. Good. Then all we have to do is to overcome your fear. Now, the first thing to do is to have a look down at the ground and say, Gravity, I respect you, but I'm not afraid of you. Now, you do it. <laughs> well, you can do it. Come an old man, I'll hold on to you. <laughs> Gravity, I... <laughs> Oh dear, wrong day to open the sunroof. <laughs> followed by a private detective. When you said you wanted to meet here, I thought I'd better disguise myself. So, little lady, what kind of balloon animal would you like? Uh, uh, a uh, rhesus monkey. <laughs> what did you want to talk about? I've been thinking about how my sister's been making both of our lives a living hell, and I've come to a decision. 
Let's run away. You mean disappear? You did it once. You changed your name. Why can't we both do it? Jan, you have no idea what the life of a fugitive is like. I can't think of anything more degrading or demoralizing. <laughs> You're on my turf. I'm gonna beat the crap out of you if you don't get out of here. <laughs> Jen, I've spent the best years of my life under an assumed identity. Hiding out, constantly on the run, always looking over my shoulder, never knowing who I could trust. But we'll be together. What about your daughter, Caroline? We'll take her with us. We'll go to Mexico. We'll start a new life. It's no kind of life for her. She can't even speak Spanish. Eric, she doesn't speak anything. <laughs> no, Jen, running away isn't the answer. Maybe not. But staying here and letting Denise take you away from me isn't right either. If you want to stay, we'll stay. But mark my words, nothing's going to drag you away from me. <laughs> Sir, if you don't mind... <laughs> Fun's over, pencil neck. Eric, <laughs> <laughs> are you all right? I'm fine. Although I have no feeling in my left arm and I believe I'm bleeding internally. <gasps> Roger, he stepped out. <laughs> There's a problem with the decorations for tomorrow's celebration. How fast can he get downstairs? That depends. <laughs> oh, never mind. I'll handle this. Good. Bring your hands down to your sides. <laughs> Splendid. <laughs> now, try to walk a bit more normally. This is how I walk around. Of course. Uh, this is open. Only a couple more paces. Come on. Come on. Don't look down. <laughs> well, I guess we've licked it. Well done. Thank you. Well, this is open. I guess I'd best be getting... Uh, 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 I believe you had some unfinished business. Uh, uh, something about a dare? Perhaps another time. No, 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 no. We both know it's just going to gnaw at you until you had it done. So my advice is strike while the iron's hot. I suppose it doesn't get much hotter than it is. That's the spirit. I can't. I just can't. Well, of course you can't. Looks like it's bye-bye for Ronald. And hello, Dad, for David. And look out for Charlotte. Denise and Harlan have teamed up against her. I can't wait to see what happens. Too bad we have to wait till next week. A massacre in the heart of Texas. Tonight, two live reports from Colleen, where 23 people were killed in a gruesome shooting spree. Also tonight, we'll talk with two AIDS patients who say their lives have been ruined by false accusations. And later in Place of Nightline, a special town hall meeting with Ted Koppel. Tonight, the process of confirming a Supreme Court justice. How can it be changed? The town hall special follows News Channel 3, and News Channel 3 follows the pick. America's watching ABC.